Thank you for joining us again in what has become a video series, My Discovery Harbor, as we adapt during this time. My name is Mark Fields. I'm the president and CEO of the company. And again, I would like to begin this by extending a big thanks to the frontline workers. It looks like we're beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's due to their efforts. So again, thank you very much. In this video, I would like to provide some insight for the general investor who is not a geologist, however, would like a better understanding of how Discovery Harbor is applying the low sulfidation gold model to its exploration programs. This video is based upon my knowledge, various academic papers, industry sources, and I will be providing some sources for you if you want to delve deeper at the end of this video. I'll be using a PowerPoint presentation for that, and to do that, I will share my screen with you, which I'm doing here. I will be talking about the Caldera Gold property in particular. That's the one that we are focused on at Discovery Harbor for the underground high grade potential that it does provide us. I will be making some forward looking statements during the course of this video presentation. This model is presented here, and again, it's called the low sulfidation epithermal gold deposit model. And there's a number of different features I'd like to point out to you here. This is a cross section, and this would be the original surface when the gold was deposited. The red indicates the structures that are the conduits to surface as the fluids move up from depth higher in the system. And as they get higher, the temperature decreases and the pressure decreases. Initially at the higher temperatures, the base metals come out, things like copper and zinc. As it becomes higher, the temperature decreases, it hits the boiling zone. And that's where the gold and silver would come out in the greatest quantity. The structure often tends to break up towards the top of the surface. And that's where other elements would come out, things like arsenic and antimony, which are good pathfinders for us to help zero in on where the gold and silver is currently. The next slide shows where we believe, how we believe the caldera can be superimposed onto the low sulfidation epithermal gold model. This is again is the original surface. This is where we believe the current surface is in the Adera Gemina area of caldera, very roughly. And as you can see, these are drill hole traces that were done by previous uh, operators. Very importantly, the average vertical depth is shown by A here, only 100 meters, less than 100 meters in fact. The very deepest hole, 194 meters, and they were testing for a, a large tonnage, low grade deposit near surface. That's why all the drill holes go only shallow within the system. And they were quite successful in some respects because they did intersect high grade gold. Some examples are here. 1.5 meters of just over nine grams per ton gold. The next one, three meters of over 25 grams per ton gold. And you can see that the drill holes also good intercepts with good grade, but sporadic. They were looking for the bulk tonnage situation. Our target is much deeper, it's down here. That's where the boiling zone would be, and the banana style deposit could potentially occur. On the left-hand side is a box of various indications of why we believe this is a good target for ourselves to be looking for, and the indications that we've developed over the years as we've explored this property. I will be going through each one of these individually during this video presentation. So first one, it's an active epithermal system, and that's evidenced by the strong alteration we see at surface on the property. This is a photograph from the Odera part of the property. You can see the bleached nature of the rock as the alteration fluids came up into the, this particular area, change the minerals, it's now solidified. And on the right hand side, same sort of situation in the fossils, very bleached rock with some brown bayonets cross cutting the original rock. So it's a very active epithermal system, an important part of course for any gold system uh, to deposit in this model. I keep coming back to the structures, that's a very important part because that's the conduits to take the metal bearing fluids from depth up towards the surface including the gold and silver. This particular rock, to me, the most important feature, you can see the broken rock fragments here, for example, another one over there, some smaller ones here as well. So the brecciation means broken rocks, which are indicative of a structure in, in, in an area. So we look for these brecciated rocks to know where the structures occur on the Caldera property. This particular rock also shows the contact zone with the country rock, so the brecciation, the structure is here, and the original rock was here, and you can see some cross-cutting or layered quartz veins here. This rock came from the Callist area, which created uh, one rock sample from there, created seven grams of gold, 
900 grams of silver. There's also gold soil and almond in this particular area. So it is on our list for the drilling because we put that for a permanent application we put in and we, we put a news release out about not that long ago. So very prospective area. The warning zone is an important part, part of it because that's where the gold and silver comes out most consistently. Mineral textures help us indicate, help us have confidence that that's where we are in this particular system. And again, here you can see this white features here, this white linear features were formerly calcite crystals replaced by silica, in this case, chalcedony. And on the other rock here, the very latest type pattern to it. And again, that's bladed silica after calcite that is indicative of the boiling zone that occurred on the Cadera property. Very important feature. We also want to make sure that the gold would be preserved at depth. It's not all eroded away. And for that, we look for a number of different features that we've identified on this property. There's a list of them here. We've got some photographic uh, evidence of that here that I've provided for you. Again, the bladed silica after calcite in this rock here. This one shows a reed cast. So in other words, an indentation of the rock here where the reed formerly existed when it was at the surface. So again, we know that we're high in the system and the gold would be below us someplace. This photograph here, the very light colored area, those are clays. We took samples of that, analyzed it for what temperature they were deposited at, came back as low temperature clays. So we're high in the system at the lower temperatures and we need to go deeper below here to find the hotter part where the gold and silver would come out at the boiling zone. So again, a nice list of features that indicate that this system is preserved at depth and we need to go deeper to find the gold deposit. A group of people I have a huge amount of respect for are the prospectors. Prospectors work today, they worked 50 years ago, 100 years ago, more years ago, and they've been on the Caldera property and they found a substantial amount of gold. And that's why we're there today, because of their work. This photograph here shows the prospectors who dug a shaft. This is a wooden ladder going down to depth as they used the tools they had at their hands at the time to drill deeper in an area that they found gold in, and they did extract some gold from this property. This one again, say same sort of thing, some wooden trusses in a very strongly altered area, you can see here. So they found gold in the area, they did some work, and we want to continue that work to drill deeper. The central photograph shows a liniment, a low part of the topography here, and that's again indicative of the structure that's on the property that are key features for where the gold would be at depth. In this particular area, the drill hole GW5, again a shallow historical drill hole, was done, intersected three meters of close to 38 gram per ton gold. So gold has been found, but it's been sporadic. This is a map of the core part of the property. You can see the scale here, zero here, 11,600 feet here. And you can divide that by 3.3 to get to the meters. The gold here is indicated in the rock samples from the stars. You can see a very distinct west by northwest pattern to them. And again, these follow the structures. That's the prominent structural direction on the property that we'll be looking for to drill deeper. You can see many samples were taken. It's obscured by my video to, to some degree, but that's 804 rock samples have been taken on the property by historical operators over the course of the years. Many, many samples, well over uh, 10 grams per ton gold. Uh, so lots of rock samples indicative of the structures leaking to the surface. This is a photograph from the fossil area, again, very strongly altered. You see this liniment through here, indicative of the structure, close to 49 grams per ton gold. So again, it's a very high grade rock samples, a very important indication for ourselves. There has been historical soil sampling in the property, but it's not been complete. So last fall, we went in there and did a soil sampling program to help fill in some gaps in the area and do full analysis for the ICP. And that's to get other things like arsenic, antimony, mercury, that as I mentioned before, pathfinders to where you find the gold. This particular one, I've used the gold and the red and the yellow are the warmer colors, if you like, and that's indicative of the higher grade gold. So the soil sample has been a very positive way for us to help to define where the best areas to drill on this property are. And we've used that as one of the layers of data to define where the drill sites will be in a permanent process. So I've been asked, are there low sulfidation gold mines that exist in the world? Yes, there are many throughout the world, in fact. And this gives a few examples of that. In particular here, Midas Mine that operated by Hecla is in Nevada. And it's very nice grades here, 35 grams per ton gold and 400 grams of silver. 
produce over 2 million ounces of gold and over 27 million ounces of silver. So this is a mine that's currently operating in Nevada, similar to what we, we are looking for today. One that was recently discovered is West Haven's uh, discovery in British Columbia called Shovel Nose. Again, a low sulfidation gold model. I was actually asked by an analyst, has anybody ever gone under a property, known there's some surface gold anomalies, eventually drilled deeper and found a mine? And the answer to that is yes. Two examples of that are right here. One is a sleeper mine that was discovered after looking at the surface and eventually they decided to drill deeper. They did not find a mine until they drilled deeper. They then found the sleeper mine that was in production for close to a decade by Amex Gold. And here you can see the grades 10.9 grams of gold and 14.7 grams of silver. 1.7 million ounces of gold produced over the course of that decade. So discovered just as a very similar process to what we're doing on Caldera. Cerro Blanco, again, that's another example where they recognize the surface potential but until they drilled deeper, thinking about the underground potential and the higher grade potential, that's when it became a, a, a mine, that, it's not, not a mine yet, but it's becoming a mine. It's in the development phase right now by Blue Stone Resources. So again, you use the surface, you work with the data, and eventually decide that you have to drill deeper, and that's where we're doing, just as we've done at Cerro Blanco, as well as the Sleeper. I did tell you I would provide some sources. Uh, and here's a, a couple of different sources that are very valuable so resources. I do work, want to recognize the, the value that these papers bring to us as they help us understand the gold sulfidation epithelial gold model, what people have done in the past in their excavation programs, what's worked, what's been less effective, what's been more effective. We've used all that knowledge, we've used the historical data, we've put some of our data on top of that to select our targets. So this gives you a bit of an idea. And uh, there's many more papers beyond this that go into more details, but this is a good basic reference just to begin with. So I'd like to conclude by circling back to the model diagram that I began with and how we layered all the work that we've done on top of that. So again, you can see the basic model is here and the Caldera work that's been done to date is throughout here. Shallow drilling, we need to drill deeper. We do believe it's preserved. We do believe there's a good potential for Bonanza style deposit. Where the gold and silver would come out at the boiling point. <coughs> Pardon me. So we will be planning to drill deeper later this year and we hope you will continue to follow our video series and if you want to have uh, any particular subjects covered please feel free to contact myself or Rodney Stevens, the vice president of the company, and we'd be pleased to try and do so. In the meantime, please stay safe and we look forward to continuing this video series and advancing the exploration programs for Discovery Harbor on the Caldera property.